ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues, parents, on behalf of the International Committee of the Red Cross, I would like to say you rocked. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. And um, it, it really made me think that um, all the teams that didn't make it to the final, well, congratulations to them too. As, as Larry said, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a practitioner, but I, I found this um, moving in, a, in different ways. I find it moving because, you know, at the end of the day, um, the world is what we make of it, right? And uh, what we, we are talking here about is the normative framework uh, that governs the way we humans interact with uh, each other and whether there are some basic rules that we can agree upon. And the reality of the building of this body of law, of this normative framework, um, and the reality of where we are today is, uh, is, uh, is conducive to, let's say, a, a mixed uh, assessment. Not very far from here, um, I heard colleagues saying that it is more dangerous to be in a hospital than, be, than to be outside of a hospital. And, uh, and when we look at what is, what is happening, I can tell you that sometimes these normative frameworks, uh, they are just the stake of uh, clash, clashes of narratives, some of which are coming from very different positions, very often absolutely incompatible, and yet they result in, uh, um, in real life. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of things I would like to say about this, but, but uh, that what is important here is to turn uh, to all those who make this, uh, this event and the process that led to this event uh, possible. Um, but, but first, let, let, let me say <coughs> why. Why ICRC is doing this? Why is it? Why is it that we are devoting resources, uh, human resources, competencies, money to engage and to do this kind of thing? Well, at, at the end of the day, wh what's in it for humanity? What's in it for a better respect of IHL? What's in it for the populations, whether they are individuals or whole communities that are exposed to or affected by uh, wars and closer to our immediate concerns to violations of the said war. Well, and this is the practitioner speaking, the law is very nice, the law is very important, the law is never perfect, the law is constantly evolving. The law, I heard in a number of uh, instances, and I must say, as a sociologist that I can only agree with it, the law is made to be broken. <laughs> and, uh, and we are here to deal with those breaches, try to prevent them, try to deal with them, and try to mitigate the impact of these violations on real humans in real life. And this uh, video you showed before uh, was, uh, was, was extremely interesting, I guess, extremely important. It just misses one thing, it misses the smell, it, miss, it misses the fear, it misses the horror. <coughs> and, and this is what this is about at the end of the day. At the end of the day, and this we see here, we think this is a significant investment in something that might not bring about tangible or immediate fruit, but it is a significant investment in Israel and all over the world. The young people, this is why I'm saying that I was moved by what I, what I heard, by the competency levels, uh, and by, but not only by that, not only by the sheer technical knowledge, but also by the heart that, that, that was behind those words and the, and the tensions between the judges and the, and the, and the participants uh, shows that uh, how, how important delegate, uh, delicate, delicate is, is all of this and how hard it is to, to, to see this. You detected some tension here? Because at the end of the day, this is all about people who are saying, and one has to understand that I, I have a mission to fulfill. And everything you are bringing on the table should be enabling me to fulfill that mission. We, of course, from a humanitarian perspective, we are coming sometimes and we, are co we come across and we are perceived as part of the problem. We are coming as the ones bringing and building obstacles for the military to actually you know, do their job, fulfill their mission, possibly save the state, the nation, our own families, our own population. And this, this clash, this line of tension, 
is at the very heart of it all. And at the end of the day, it's about people who have an ethos, people who think, as a lawyer, am I here to use the law in order to enable <coughs> violations? You might find this provocative, but it's real life. On the other hand, you, you may have humanitarians who are actually using the law in ways that might prevent an actual normal, acceptable uh, uh, exercise of, uh, of force. And this tension is really very much at the heart of it. So, as a, from a practitioner perspective, I'm saying this. Uh, signing treaties is not good enough. That's ink on a paper. We are dealing with the blood. We are dealing with the mud. We are dealing with the gangrene. And to ratify the Geneva Conventions and any other treaty is good enough as a very early starting point. Uh, from there, you need to internalize those rules. You need to know those rules. You have to spread those rules. You have to make sure that those who are in charge, responsible, and ideally accountable for implementing them uh, have them in their mindset, in their toolkit, but also as boundaries for what is acceptable to do. International humanitarian law must be incorporated into national law. It must be integrated further into the policies, into the rules of engagement, in the operat operating procedures whether it is a very sophisticated Northwestern army or in uh, a militia somewhere in, the, in a, some sub-Saharan area that you, you have never heard of about. It must be part of the training. It must be part of all the framework that organizes the planning, the execution, and the follow-up of a given military or security operation or endeavor. Ultimately, there must be more than that, even. There must be a buy-in. It must be endorsed. It must be accepted. It must be internalized by those who call the shots. And, uh, and those can be commanders in the field who, at the end of the day, as you, you would have detected also from the discussions, they do not have the time to enter into the nitty-gritty or whether this sub-disposition of that thing is actually applicable. They are dealing with fire. They are dealing with danger. They are dealing with the mission. And yet, we need to create the conditions where, precisely because it's hard, uh, <laughs> these rules are somehow governing the understanding of what me, as, a, as, a, as, an, as an operational commander in the field, as a freedom fighter, as a terrorist, you, you, whatever, when I have the power to do things, I have to integrate that in, in the way uh, our troops is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is behaving. And when I say the troops, I'm extending this to the whole uh, uh, to the whole gamut of armed forces that exercise, have the power to make a difference for the best or for the worst of entire population. So we are, we are putting a lot of effort in promoting and disseminating IHL around the world uh, because it is a, a key way of doing precisely what I referred to. Part of this goes through the engagement with academic circles, of course. In Israel, it's, we are setting quite high standards, and this is also very much thanks to you and thanks to the partners we are having in, uh, in Israel. We are talking conferences, workshops, seminars. We are talking uh, training sessions. We are talking confrontational sometimes, but always inspiring exchanges. Um, and for the last 10 years, this event, um, well, I'm proud to say, is definitely and, and tonight is a, is a further proof of that, is, is our flagship, flagship academic event when it comes to students and academics in Israel. Now, more pragmatically, students who have participated in the, in the IHL competition this year and in previous, year, previous years have not only demonstrated a keen uh, um, knowledge and interest in IHL, um, they, they, have, they have done it with, with their heart. They have done it because they believe in it. And, uh, and they have had uh, some success that simple technical expertise cannot, uh, um, cannot fully explain. Um, up to reaching the semi-finals in the, in the Big Ten international competition just last year. Um, while we are, of course, pleased to note all of these achievements, we have been even more gratified to see how 
uh, uh, some of the students who have been here, and, and I definitely believe so, those who have been here uh, the, these, past, uh, these past days, they, they have a life after that. And they carry this knowledge and they carry this experience with them. Of course, in Israel, IHL is not like it can be today in Switzerland, a mere academic exercise. We all know that. It has an enormous, practical, concrete significance in the daily life of Israelis, of Palestinians too, and uh, in both Israel and the occupied territories. It also plays a prominent role in national court decisions, in the work and the narratives and the political dynamics in, uh, in New York, in Geneva, in Amman, you name it. And they are an important part of the legal narrative, sometimes Hasbara, that a number of states, a number of institutions are using for a number of purposes. So we are delighted to see the enthusiasm from the students <laughs> and, uh, and we are confident that it will remain with them in their future endeavors. The success of this year's uh, national IHL competition would not have been possible if not for the support of, uh, of uh, very important partners for, for, for us, important academic institutes, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, of course, the Tel Aviv University, the Interdisciplinary Center, IDC in Atzeria, the Sapir Academic uh, College, the College of Management Academic Studies. These institutions, and we do not take this for granted, they have decided to embark with us on such an adventure. They have encouraged the students to, um, to, to be attentive to what we are doing, to, uh, to participate to it. They have provided consistent support. They were not obliged to do so. They could have said, you know, the Four Geneva Convention, the Law of War, are they interested. They choose another track, and they must be, and they must be uh, recognized for that. Special thanks goes to ALMA, the Association for the Promotion of IHL in Israel, and in particular, uh, Ido uh, uh, Rosenzweig. Um, Chairman of, uh, of Alma uh, for, for for the support and not and not a one ad hoc support. We are talking about the steady support over various years. Of course, again, uh, le let me again express our heartfelt uh, appreciation uh, to the four judges uh, for this year's competition, Dr. Hilly Mudrik. <laughs> when I was listening uh, yeah. outside. But of course, uh, this would not be possible without people within uh, uh, the ICRC. Uh, Katya and Esti, thank you. The, the IHL legal team, the strike, uh, our strike force here, that's uh, Alon Maya. Larry. Larry. <laughs> of course, because I mean, this is, uh, he said before, yeah, this is my, 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 how do you say, the swan song. He's leaving soon. Um, soon. He's li tomorrow. Yeah, very soon, very soon. He's leaving tomorrow. He's going to China. He's going to be bored. Smoke, <laughs> and smog over there. He's going to miss us a lot. Larry, <laughs> thank you. And to the participating teams, their coaches. Uh, congratulations, really, to everybody. My congratulations in advance for the winners and to those who did not win. Because at the end of the day, you know, I think we all win with this. Thank you very much.